Welcome. Today I'd like to tell you about a couple of games. And they're not games that people play, actually, but they're games that are designed as puzzles just to think about. Both of these games happen to involve guessing whether a certain number is the larger or the smaller of two numbers. And uh, for the first game, I get to pick two numbers. They have to be two different numbers, and they have to be integers. So they could be anything from minus infinity to plus infinity. They could be minus 48. They could be plus a billion and one. Um, but in fact, I've written down two such numbers in my pocket. Uh, here's one of them. And, uh, and here's another one. And I'll need a volunteer from the audience. Catherine, can I borrow you for a moment? Thank you very much. So I've got two different numbers in these two fists. And what I'd like you to do is pick one of them and open it up and see what the number is. Okay. Very good. The number is 43. Okay, now the question is, is that the larger or the smaller of my two numbers? Catherine, what do you think? Larger? She thinks it's the larger number. Let's find out. Ah, she was right. The other number is 38, and indeed she picked the larger number. You win a dollar. Thank you very much, Catherine. Okay. Now, but is there, any, is there really any way of knowing, looking at one of these two numbers, whether it's going to be the larger or the smaller of the two? Maybe I always pick numbers in the 30s. Maybe I always pick numbers in the 40s. Maybe I pick one number in the 30s and one number in the billions. She doesn't know anything about my psychology. Is there any way that she can play this game to get better than just a 50-50 guess? Well, the surprising answer is there actually is such a way. In order to do that, Catherine needs to do something called selecting a random threshold. In order to do that, she first has to decide on some way to pick a random number. And it really doesn't matter very much what this way is. But it has to be that whatever way she chooses could possibly pick any number it could pick the number minus 82, and it could pick the number 1,423, and it could pick the number zero. There isn't any way that she can pick any number with equal likelihood, but we don't need that. We just need every number to be possible. So Catherine, have you got a number to suggest? 15. 15. Okay, let's take this number. And now we're going to add a half to it. That's going to become Catherine's random threshold. And here's what she's going to do. When she comes up and looks at my two fists, she's going to pick one of the two at random. That's very important. She picks one of the two fists at random. Then she opens them up, and whatever she sees there, she compares to her random threshold 15 and a half. Okay? Now, in fact, the numbers that, she actu that were actually written on the pieces of paper were 38 and 43. Here's what Catherine's plan is. If the number she sees is bigger than the threshold, she guesses that it's the larger number. If the number she sees is smaller than the threshold, she guesses that it's the smaller number. Okay? Now, in fact, since both of these numbers are larger than the threshold, if she picked 43, she would be right. She'd be guessing it's bigger, she'd be right, just like she was. If she picked 38, she'd also be guessing it was the larger number, and now she'd be wrong. So it's 50-50. Well, what other things can happen? It could be that both of the numbers were smaller than 15 and a half. For example, maybe one of the numbers is minus 11, and the other number is 4. Okay. Now, whichever number Catherine chooses, she's going to be guessing 
that it's the smaller number because it's smaller than her threshold. Well, if she, gets, if she picks minus 11, she'll be right that it's the smaller number. If she picks 4, she'll be wrong. Again, it's a 50-50 proposition. But there's one other possibility, and that is it's possible that her random threshold will fall between my two numbers. Maybe the two numbers were 12 and 29. If that's the case, no matter which hand she picks, she's going to be guessed correctly. If she, get, if she picks the hand with a 12, she guesses it's the smaller number and she's right. If she picks the hand with a 29, she guesses it's the larger number and she's right. So 50-50 if they're both smaller than the threshold, 50-50 if they're both bigger than the threshold, but if the threshold falls between the new two numbers, she always wins and that's how she gets her advantage. Notice that although Catherine does have an advantage in using this strategy, it's not much of an advantage. Uh, I can pick my two numbers so that they're close together and so that the, the probability that Catherine is going to be able to slide her random threshold between them is very small. So although she does get better than a 50% chance to win the game, she can't guarantee as much as, for example, a 51% chance to win the game. Now I'd like to show you one other game which is very similar, differing in only two respects. Well, maybe three respects. The new game works like this. Again, there are going to be two numbers, but this time the two numbers are going to be real numbers between 0 and 1. They could be any real number between 0 and 1. It could be a half, pi over 4, anything you want. But in this game, I don't get to decide what those numbers are. Instead, those numbers are cho chosen uniformly at random between 0 and 1, perhaps by Tyche, the goddess of chance. Okay? So those numbers are chosen. They're handed to me. I don't get to pick them. But I get to look at those two numbers, and I get to decide which one to show Catherine. Let's do it. I've got two numbers right here, which were handed to me by the goddess of chance. I'm going to look them over and say, okay, I think I'm going to show Catherine this one. So I'll put the other one back. And Catherine, here is your number. Okay. So Catherine, what do you think? Is that the larger or is that the smaller of the two numbers? Smaller. She guesses that it's the smaller. Well, it's less than a half. Maybe it's the smaller. Thank you very much. Well, wait a minute. Shall we find out if she's right again? Wait, where's the other number? There it is. 0 0.691. She was right. Thank you very much, Catherine. You're very good at this. Well, so, since Catherine had a strategy for the last game that would win more than 50% of the time, we can ask, has she got a strategy for this game? For example, maybe she should just guess that any number which is less than a half is the smaller number, and any number which is greater than a half is the larger number. Or, maybe she should again choose a random threshold. Well, the surprising answer is that in this game, there is a strategy that I can have that will prevent Catherine from getting any advantage, no matter what she does. And it doesn't matter if she knows that I'm using this strategy. I'll tell you what the strategy is. The strategy is I look at the two numbers that are handed to me by the goddess of chance, and I take the number that's closer to a half and show that number to Catherine. So 0.374 is closer to a half than 0.691, so that's why I showed her 0.374. Okay. Now I claim that once she saw this number, knowing that my strategy is to give her the number that's close to a half, she knows she has no nothing better that she can do than just make a random guess. Why? Because if the number is 37, 0.374 and it's the number that's closer to a half, what's the other number? 
Well, it's either a number between 0 and 0.374, or it's a number which is between 1 minus this number and 1. So 1 minus this number is 0.626, I think. And so the other possibility is that the number is between 0.626 and 1. Well, there's the same amount of space between 0.626 and 1 as there is between 0 and 0.374. So it's exactly 50-50 whether the other number is bigger than 0.374 or smaller than 0.374. So even knowing my strategy, no matter what Catherine does, she has no way to get an advantage in this second game. Well, that's all I have to say for today. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed these games, and I hope that uh, you will try them on your friends, your teachers, maybe your enemies, and, uh, and try to examine your own variations and see how they work. Thank you.